The mountains of northern Colombia hide one of South America's most impressive man-made wonders. Teyuna, known as Ciudad Perdida, the lost city. It's centuries older than Machu Picchu, but draws only a fraction of the visitors. Getting here takes a four-day uphill hike on muddy paths once ruled by drug smugglers, treasure thieves, and hostage takers, where now traditional tribes meet modern travelers in an awe-inspiring environment. Follow me on a trek to the lost city. This is the most comfortable we will be for the next four days, jolting in a transporter up the foothills of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Our hike begins in a village officially named El Mame, but locals call it Machete, after the blades wielded during an outbreak of violence several decades ago. This town used to be in the center of a narco-trafficking route, bringing cocaine and marijuana from the mountains to the sea. But today, it's a peaceful place that lives off the tourists who come to and from the Ciudad Perdida. Here we meet our main guide, Pablo, from the indigenous Wiwa tribe. Pablo warns our group what's ahead. Early starts and wet weather. Plastic bags are essential. We'll be marching 23 kilometers each way. Off we go. Within minutes, the road is mud. No one's shoes are spared, except for our guides, who know it's best to wear rubber boots. We are carrying our own clothes, but all our food goes up on the back of mules. One animal for every five hikers. After around four hours and eight kilometers of uphill hiking, we reach our simple camp station. It was a pretty manageable start to the trek. Uh, there were some steep hills, everybody's shoes got muddy, but in general, it was pretty easy going. But we've been told to prepare for an arduous hike of around nine hours the next day. To power us along, our cooks prepare a meal of fried fish, vegan options available. No one goes hungry on these hikes. <laughs> and our mosquito-netted bunk beds are more comfy than you might expect. Before the sun crests the hills, we're up and ready, motivated by a promise from our guide, Pablo. The mud has mostly firmed up. Now the path crosses streams and rivers as we progress ever upwards. Today's hike is as much about culture as nature. As he walks, Pablo works on his demburu, also known as a poporo. He chews coca leaf, mixes saliva with crushed seashells, and pastes it around a gourd. These bulbs can grow to weigh several kilograms, and they're sacred to the indigenous men of the Sierra Nevada. The tribes here, including Wiwa and Kogi, are the descendants of the Tairona people who once lived in the lost city. They maintain their traditions as they have for centuries. This Wiwa village of mud huts with thatched palm roofs is only occupied for several days a month for ceremonies and community meetings. Most of the time, Wiwa families live in isolated huts in the hills. The children seem delighted by gifts of chocolate but in general, it feels as if we're intruding on a people who'd rather not be bothered by us. Our guides make good on their promise. At midday, we reach the waterfall. This waterfall is so powerful. It's creating its own wind. And Pablo says it's not even running yet at full force. Enough relaxation. The hardest part of the hike is just ahead. Tough as it is, this is the easy way to the lost city. 
Bounty hunters spent years hacking their way through the tropical rainforest, searching for gold in the 1970s. Deadly fighting broke out between them as they looted the city's artifacts. The robbers were followed by archaeologists, who convinced the Colombian government to protect the site and its treasure. And today, instead of gold, it's these priceless panoramas that draw us here. Take a look at that view. This is why people come on this hike. It's not just to see the lost city at the end, but it's the incredible nature of the Sierra Nevada mountains along the way. The challenging trail takes its toll. Some hikers pay to ride mules due to exhaustion or injury, though it hardly seems comfortable. Our group manages to make it on foot. One by one, we arrive at the simple camp where we'll spend the night before ascending to the lost city. After two days of hiking, the final stage of the trek is a breeze. A cable car draws us closer to the Ciudad Perdida, the lost city, or as the indigenous call it, Teona. What a way to travel! And a few moments later, we reach the base of a stone staircase of more than 1,000 steps. Here they are, the steps to the Ciudad Perdida. Today they're relatively clear and you can access them easily. But you can only imagine what it must have been like when those first explorers started coming here in the 1970s seeking treasure, what they would have found. The steps would have been overgrown with jungle, barely visible, and they would have had to cut their way through dense foliage. Imagine what they were thinking as they ascended these steps, wondering what treasures would lie at the top. What they found were the remains of a city that archaeologists say was probably settled by the Tyrona people around 1,500 years ago. At least 2,000 people lived here, in huts atop these circular formations. They buried their dead below, along with their gold. Only a portion of the buildings have been uncovered. These remaining stone structures may be up to 900 years old, several centuries older than Machu Picchu. The city was abandoned after the Spanish conquistadors established their colonies on the coasts nearby. But as Pablo tells us, it was never completely forgotten. Ciudad Perdida nunca estuvo perdido. Ciudad Perdida estaba resguardado y solamente quienes sabían de esta ciudad antigua solamente eran los, las comunidades indígenas de la sierra. Era eh, donde anualmente, cada año, cada seis meses venían a hacer pagamento. And they continue to come each September when the city is closed to hold ceremonies. We pay our respects to the local mamo or shaman who sells us beaded bracelets for health and protection, which we hopefully won't need. Only a few years ago, this spectacular site was constantly guarded by the Colombian military because in 2003, leftist rebels kidnapped a group of tourists here and held them hostage for more than 100 days. But the soldiers have now left. The site is no longer considered dangerous. Instead, it's a place of celebration. And for others, it inspires deep contemplation. So rich in recent and ancient history, this place allows us to stop and reflect in relative isolation. Only 200 people a day are allowed to enter here which is why it's so well preserved. It's also why it's not so well known as other locations like Machu Picchu. But for those who come here, it's an incredible experience to wander around and to contemplate what happened to the people who lived here. Luckily, one of our group members is a Colombian anthropologist who says there's no clear explanation for why Teuna was largely deserted more than 400 years ago. De pronto ya era un paso a tener la importancia que se creía o ya dejaron de creer en, en lo que ellos consideraban. Pudo ser enfermedades, pudo ser malas cosechas, pudo ser alguna otra cosa así. The descendants of the Tairona people have survived through a simple existence connected to nature. A lesson for our modern civilization facing multiple crises. Si vemos que los indígenas viven felices a pesar de sus limitaciones y sus cosas, de que si la avaricia nos va a llevar a una autodestrucción, Why don't we stop and see that we're doing a damage to the environment? 
a pesar de que tenemos un solo, un solo mundo donde vivir. Few leave the city feeling unchanged or unchallenged. Our visit to Teyuna is over, but our hike is not. Amazingly, there's still more to see as we walk the same path in the other direction. There's more to learn about the Wiwa culture, how they strip plants for fiber, which the women weave into bags, and how the men spend their nights sharing stories and working on their sacred Demburu objects. These communities have fought hard to resist many modern intrusions and protect the lost city from being overrun by mass tourism. Though on our hike the next day, we pass new tourist camps under construction. As we set off for our final day of hiking, I'm feeling pretty proud of the physical achievement until I meet these guides who tell me they can make the same trip there and back in just one day. Pero para ustedes disfrutar, tomar foto, es mejor un poco más, más tranquilo. So I take his advice, paying more attention to the birds and the butterflies, the animals which observe or ignore our passage. And even as our journey nears its end, despite all the eye-popping places we've seen, it seems this path has saved some of its most beautiful sights for the finale. Back where we started in the village of El Mame or Machete, we gather for a final drink to celebrate our experiences. Four days marching up and down muddy mountains, more than the distance of a marathon, and it has been worth every slippery step of the way. The problem with adventures like this is that they're slightly addictive. I now want to keep searching for more epic hikes to remote locations and make sure my boots don't stay clean for long.